As we revealed at the beginning of this series, the biggest killer in weather-related general aviation accidents falls under the category of VFR into IMC. Let's investigate a very tragic accident in Florida in which going VFR into IMC conditions led to the loss of control of a home-built aircraft. On December 17, 2015, an experimental RV-4 crashed near Greenville, Florida. On board, a CFI who was also a naval aviator and a student pilot who both died in the accident. The flight originated earlier in the day from the home base of the CFI, Meridian, Mississippi. The pilot was traveling to Orlando Apopka Airport to pick up his 18-year-old cousin and bring her back to Meridian to provide her with initial flight training. After arriving in Apopka and while refueling the RV-4, the pilot was told by a retired FAA employee that weather in his intended direction of flight was really bad. The former FAA employee later told the NTSB the pilot appeared to be in a hurry. During an earlier briefing with flight service, while in the air en route to Apopka, the briefer advised the pilot, VFR not recommended. Ignoring the warnings from the briefer and the retired FAA employee, the pilot launched for the return trip at night with his cousin on board. The pilot became concerned about the weather and contacted Flight Watch. Flight Watch, Flight Watch, 777 Bravo Papa. Uh, November 7 Bravo Papa, Angel Radio, go ahead. 77 Bravo Papa, if able, request update on weather in Tallahassee. Do take note that you have an Airmet Tango for moderate turbulence, an Airmet Sierra for IFR conditions, an Airmet Zulu for moderate icing. Details upon request, VFR flight not recommended along that route of flight. It looks like you're about to enter into an IMC condition at the surface. A little over an hour and a half after departing, the pilot declared an emergency with Tallahassee approach control. He was in IFR conditions and told ATC, quote, I gotta be honest, sir, my airplane is not capable of IFR. Fifteen seconds later, the pilot made his last transmission to ATC before radar contact was lost. The wreckage was found the next morning. In examining the NTSB report from the accident, one section reads, The low visibility conditions that existed during the flight, which was conducted at night in instrument conditions, were conducive to the development of spatial disorientation. It goes on to say, the pilot's actions and responses and the airplane's turning ground track and near vertical descent were consistent with the pilot losing airplane control due to spatial disorientation. While this portion of the report gives some insight into how the airplane lost control, it does not answer the question, why would an experienced pilot in CFI make this flight with his young cousin on board in those conditions at night in an aircraft not equipped for IFR flight? A possible answer to that question could be revealed in an interview the NTSB conducted with the pilot's father. The report states, The pilot's father reported both pilots were very busy and highly driven. There was limited time for this training experience, but they made the time anyway. Let's examine some lessons learned from this fatal accident. First, heed warnings. This naval aviator and CFI had been warned about the weather in an in-flight briefing he received in his flight to Florida to pick up his cousin to bring her back to Mississippi for flight training. However, it could be argued the best briefing he received was from the retired FAA employee who spoke with him at the Apopka Airport and warned him the weather where he was heading was not good. Here was a fellow aviator with first-hand experience attempting to give him an in-person PIREP. It's also important to note that experience does not make us accident-proof. The NTSB Accident Database is loaded with accidents involving pilots with hundreds and in some cases thousands of hours in their logbooks. 
how many hours in your logbook does not eliminate the human factors that can lead to bad decisions. The fact is, all pilots are human and capable of suffering from conditions frequently referred to as get-their-itis or mission mentality. The answer is to police ourselves in order to be aware when we may be drifting into these mindsets. Another lesson learned is the importance of an honest self-evaluation. Evaluate your own personality to determine if you have personality traits similar to the pilot in command in this accident that could encourage you to make dangerous decisions in the quest to accomplish a goal. No goal is worth placing your life and the lives of your passengers at risk. Do you have an instrument rating? Is that an assurance that you are immune from suffering from an accident involving VFR into IMC? Here is a shocking statistic. Of accidents attributed to a pilot going VFR into IMC, 30% of those pilots had an IFR rating. Do the accidents we have investigated in this series reveal a trend? With perhaps the exception of the accident involving the shifting winds in New York, the others reveal it is not really a weather problem that is the number one killer of general aviation pilots. It is actually decisions that put the pilots into those dangerous conditions. How can you ensure you will not fall victim to the same decision-making mistakes? We will share some techniques to help you weatherwise your flights in the final installment in this series.